Hello, and welcome to Introducing the Forms API. I'm Christian Schalk, a Google Developer Advocate, and in this presentation, I'll be providing a general overview of the new Forms API, including what use cases it supports, as well as a technical overview of the API itself. The new Google Forms API builds on the power of Google Forms by providing programmatic access for managing forms, acting on responses, and empowering developers to build powerful integrations with forms. The API supports two key use cases. They are form creation and editing, such as automated form generation from question banks or other data backends, and reaction to form responses. Automations can act on incoming responses, enabling things like real-time dashboards or visualizations, or triggering business workflows based on the response data. Here are some key use cases for the Forms API. The first deals with education automation integrations, and these include integrations with learning management systems, custom form or quiz generation from question banks, and student tracking with real-time dashboards. Another important set of use cases deal with customer management and support. These are auto generation of surveys or forms based on customer data, and triggering notifications and processes based on responses from customers. A third very important set of use cases deal with data analysis and visualizations. These allow you to create custom visualizations with response data and to leverage push notifications to update the visualizations in real time. In order to start using the API, you must first enable the Forms API in your GCP project, create API client credentials, including an API key, client ID, and secret. These will be used for all subsequent requests to the API afterwards. For these steps, it's recommended to consult the Forms API setup guide in the API documentation. Once you are set up to use the API in either a desktop or web configuration, you can use any of its nine API methods. The first method to try can be forms.create. It uses an HTTP post with a JSON body where you can specify both the title and other form details. Upon successful creation of the new form, the response will contain details about the new form. A next method to try can be forms.get. It uses an HTTP GET with a form ID included in the URL. The response will contain details about the requested form. One of the most used methods is forms.batchUpdate. It allows for creating and editing of both form settings and form fields. It uses an HTTP post with a JSON body specifying the update details. Here's an example of updating a form to be a quiz. And the response will contain details about the update. To retrieve a list of forms responses, use the forms.responses.list method. It uses an HTTP GET with the requested form ID along with the trailing slash responses in the URL. The response will contain the form responses. And to retrieve a single form response, use the forms.responses.get method. It also uses an HTTP GET, but with both the form ID and response ID in the request URL. The response will contain the requested form response info. What are forms watches? Forms API watches allow applications to subscribe to cloud PubSub notifications when form change events occur. Event types include schema, which track changes to form content or settings, and response, i.e. when form responses are submitted. Here's an example of the forms.watches.create method. It uses an HTTP post with a JSON body, which includes the cloud PubSub topic and which event type to watch for. The response will indicate that the new watch has been activated. And here are all four watches methods for creating, deleting, listing, and renewing forms watches. Before using these, you'll want to consult the setup and receive push notifications guide in the API documentation for more information. This concludes the forms API introduction presentation. For more information on the forms API, consult these helpful links. Thanks for watching.